Lady in red. <gasps> hey, cake nistas. It's Mommy. Oh. Hey, cake nistas. It's Marisha. This was really supposed to be <laughs> uploaded a couple of springs ago. This was my mom's birthday cake. I wanted to post this before her next birthday. It's just great because you don't have to be a level five cake decorator to make this cake. This is a beautiful wedding cake. It's a beautiful baby shower cake, wedding shower cake, or birthday cake. Probably took me like 35 minutes really to decorate the whole cake by the time I really got going. And all you have to do is get some flowers, boot. This is perfect for a springtime birthday, but Whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this gorgeous two-tiered floral cake. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, press on the notification bell, and let's get started. Okay, cake nieces, let's get started on this beautiful cake. So if you don't know, my mom is bad and bougie, okay? We're cooking up cake, no oozy. So she loves a two-tier cake for her birthday and more than likely it's always going to have lemon flavoring in it. So this bottom tier is going to be lemon and blueberry. So I have a vanilla cake, I added lemon zest, lemon pulp, and lemon juice to it. And I'm going to fill it with blueberry filling. I have made a vanilla buttercream border to make sure that that filling does not come out. And we're going to do three super thick layers. We could have done really six layers or even broken each individual layer into three thin, thin, thin layers. But we just wanted three good thick layers of that lemon cake with that blueberry filling on the inside. I'm hitting each cake layer up with some lemon simple syrup to make sure that it stays moist. Typically I would do a crumb coat first to trap in any crumbs, however this cake does not seem to have many crumbs at all. So instead of doing a crumb coat, I'm going to pipe out one thick layer of frosting and then smooth it out very carefully without getting any of those cake crumbs into that frosting. Now this is going to be a semi-naked cake. Whenever I make a cake for my family, I always do a very thin layer of frosting just because we tend to kind of move it off to the side anyway when it's a lot. So I know that I really only need a little bit and overall that just makes the decorating process that much easier you don't have to fuss and fight with this cake because it's not that serious I did put a stick through the cake because it is tall and it has that filling and while I'm adding the buttercream and smoothing it out I do not want those layers to mess up on me and slide away that has happened that's a catastrophe that could almost be a cake tail. I was making a wedding cake and when I tell you that the top layer was sliding off to the left, the middle layer was sliding off to the right, and then the bottom one was just squishing down. Oh, that was stressful. So the way to really combat that is to just do a really thick frosting for your border inside. That helps to hold everything in together. I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to add my dowels to the cake and I do use bubble tea straws. They make the perfect dowels and they are so affordable. Make sure that they are all the same height. And you guys, this is a six inch cake. This two tier cake was perfect for six to seven people. We all had leftovers. This cake would be plenty for 15 people. I'm purposely making my frosting look slightly rough and rugged because it's supposed to be rustic and it's supposed to be quick and it's supposed to look like nature in springtime. So this is all a part of the theme, okay? Now, why I have a priority mail cardboard as a plate right now, I don't know. But either way, it's working out. So I'm going to take my four inch cake and this is just a regular vanilla cake and I'm going to fill it with my homemade chocolate fudge frosting. I'm going to do three layers of the four inch cake. 
And this is a Wilton brand cake pan set that allows you to bake your cakes with that cavity on the inside so that you can fill them. I believe that this set is discontinued. You may be able to find it on Amazon. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a wonderful set to have. I find it so convenient when you have super small cakes like this and it can be hard to fill and hard to frost. This makes the process so easy. Once again, I am putting a wooden dowel through the top tier cake, AKA kebab stick. <laughs> and I'm going to use that to hold my layers in place while I frost it. This one does have some crumbs. I'm not concerned. Now both cakes have been refrigerated for at least 30 minutes. I can now stack one on top of the other and then put a long wooden dowel through both tiers so that they do not <laughs> come apart. You can hide that with a little dot of buttercream. I'm gonna add some gold <sighs> because my middle name is Gold Leaf at this point. It just is, it just is. And the gold here is my accent. It just makes all of the sense in the world to have a naked cake with gold leaf. And then you can begin to place your flowers. I just went to the supermarket. I found a good variety of springtime flowers and I'm gonna use those to decorate the cakes. You want to get unsprayed organic flowers. You wanna make sure that they are clean, that they are fresh. I'm sure that there are rules to arranging flowers on cakes, but you're not gonna hear those rules from me. I pretty much just play around with the flowers until I feel like it looks good. And that is how I made this gorgeous but simple two-tiered floral birthday cake. Good sore and a flower cake. Bye guys. Happy birthday to you. We decided for her birthday to do a floral theme. So my sister made the table spread like just really, really pretty. And we put flower petals all over the place. I charged up my other phone, my old phone, so that I could actually read some Cake Nista comments. How did it go from 35 to 6%? The Cake Nista comment of the day, I don't like wearing red. Maybe it's the lips. I like wearing red. See, I already have a small mouth. I know this is random. I already have a small mouth, right? And like red lips, I feel like it just makes my mouth look even smaller. Okay. Aya Rahimi. Oh gosh, I feel like I butchered it. Aya Rahimi says, Hey Marisha, I was just wondering how you would measure flour. I've heard it can affect the weight if you pack it on or spoon it in. These cupcakes look so amazing. Yes, you're absolutely right. So it definitely can. So when I measure my flour, and I also do have this tip in my baking tips video. So to properly measure your flour, you're actually going to put your measuring cup on a flat surface. And then you're going to use a spoon or something else to pour that flour right into the cup. And then when you're done with that, you're going to level it off with a knife, and that is how you properly measure your flour. Measure your flour again after you've sifted it. When I would sift my flour and then put it back in the measuring cup, it was always a little bit over one cup. And it would be over about a tablespoon. So try sifting it, put it back into that measuring cup, and see what you get then. I definitely keep a scoop in my big 50 pound cake flour bag and I just hover my measuring cup and I do a sprinkle sprinkle with the scoop and then I just skim the top off with a knife or something like that or even the edge of the scoop sometimes I just could like skim it off. Um, the best way of course is to scale it. Thank you Aya for commenting. Wish mommy a seriously belated birthday. I mean like really down below in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, Cake Nisas. I thought that was a ghost. I just need to go to bed. This is, I feel like this is the 90s look. Is this not the 90s look? Where like you can see the, the lipstick stop. I don't see people with that problem anymore.
But it could be, I don't know. I don't look at people's lips like that. I feel like that three seconds is the cutest that I've looked all day.